Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Our guest today has over 35 years of experience in the global and Canadian exploration and production sector. He will deep dive into the second lightest element, helium, from the company's drill results, new drill holes, future expansion, expectations, the overall helium market, and a prototype plant that can produce 99.99% pure helium. He is the Chief Executive Officer and Director of Imperial Helium. Dr. David Johnson's joining us today. But before we bring you today's interview, do me a quick favor and tap that subscribe button for me, please. Hey, David, welcome back to The Dive. It is great to be back here. Good to see you again, Cassandra. Yeah, good to see you too. It's so great to have you back. Okay, so David, the company announced positive results from the second well at Steveville. Could you give us some color on the results? Oh yeah, uh, listen, uh, tremendous well results. Very, very pleased. So the, the the second well was really the twin of the blowout well. We were looking to see whether or not this well would produce uh, comparable results to what we saw from the blowout. And the, the production test results do in fact do that. We have an absolute open flow rate of 22.5 million cubic feet. That, of course, is not the rate that you would produce it at, but uh, it does establish that we'll be able to have uh, flow rates of 5 to 8 million cubic feet a day for uh, at least uh, three years, if not longer, before we go into decline. Okay, awesome. That's like what we like to hear. Okay, so Imperial Helium recently completed an appraisal of the structure at Steville. Did this meet expectations? Has your strategy changed following the results? No, uh, the strategy hasn't changed uh, following the results. It did meet our expectations. What we've been able to do is to define the size of the structure itself and, and, and in part how big the resource is. We're finishing up the analysis on just what the volumes are. But what I can tell you is that with this well and the next well, uh, we expect to meet our guidance of 10 million cubic feet a day for an initial plant on this part of the, the Steveville structure. So the company also announced a third well at Steveville. What are the expectations for the third well? Yeah, the, the third well, when we look at the log results from um, our current success well at 10 of 22 and the one, uh, the well that will be twinning at 16 of 11, the log results are extremely comparable and very positive in terms of the, the reservoir section that we'll be looking to. So we have great confidence that the well that we're drilling will be a valid uh, producing well and produce comparable results to the 10 of 22 well. So we're on stream. This is looking very, very exciting for us and, and we should be ready to meet guidance and get going and have our plant ready uh, for uh, the end of the second, the end of the fourth quarter in 2022. Okay, awesome, good stuff. So Imperial also recently completed an agreement with Onto Solutions to construct and deliver a prototype plant producing 99.99% pure helium. Can you speak to this strategy? Absolutely. So the bulk of the helium that's used for, uh, for manufacturing purposes is 99.999% is pure, grade A, grade P, 5.9. It goes by a variety of names, but about 70% of the uses that use that were manufacturing uses call for that quality of helium. So being able to produce that in the market gives us a premium on price that we can get for our product. Raw helium sells closer to sort of the two to 300 kind of range and, and pure helium 5.9 sort of in the 600 uh, range. And those are US dollars. So there's a significant premium to be catched by doing 5.9 uh, helium. The prototype plant itself is essentially um, the model plant that we'll use for building the plant that we'll actually use for refining the helium. Uh, what this plant allows us to do, and we should have this plant built by the end of the year, what it does is it proves to our gas offtaker, which is Uniper, that we can produce 5.9 helium, and it gives them confidence that we can actually deliver 5.9 helium into the market with the plant that we are going to build when we ultimately produce um, the wells from the Steveville structure. So how many wells will the prototype plant be able to support? Is future expansion a possibility? Okay, so the prototype plant actually doesn't support a well. Um, the prototype plant uh, is meant 
to prove up the design of uh, of the plant so that when we build a full size plant, we're not wrestling with the details of the plant. We've already worked out all the bugs. That's what the prototype plant does. In addition, as I said before, it proves that we can make 5-9 helium. When we build a plant, that plant will be built and we will set it out to produce on the Steveville structure. Um, the nice thing about working with helium is that because the process is mechanical, any any growth to the, the structure is linear. So what that means is, you know, we've got two wells, it's handling 10 million a day. If we have another 10 million that we could bring on, we double the size of the plant. And so it's modular. We can build it out that in that way. Okay. Okay. It makes sense. All right. So the helium market is largely hidden behind closed doors. What sort of price trends has have occurred as of late? Can the market support additional supply? Uh, yeah, the, the market can support additional supply. Uh, absolutely. And, and our gas off takers are very keen about, about getting going both either with five, nine helium or with uh, potentially with, with, raw helium. Now our intention is to produce 5.9 helium. With regard to price in the market uh, right now, gosh, it, it, it is opaque, but we still see from anecdotal data from people we talk to and, and that the prices remain solid for helium in the marketplace. And I don't expect that to change. Um, the things that drive price in the marketplace in North America, um, basically, North America is somewhat isolated because helium in order to come into the market has to be transported as a liquid. Um, and those are basically ISO containers, which hold 1 million cubic feet of helium and they're transported by container ship. And there's a container ship problem right now, as you know. So it's not like people are gonna fill up a ship and flood the Canadian, mar the Canadian and US market with helium. That's not going to happen. Um, so I'm not looking for a sudden change in in the strong prices that we see for helium uh, within the next few years. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us the update. It's always a pleasure. It's been a great pleasure to be here, Cassandra. Thank you so much for providing me with this time. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back again tomorrow with more great content. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell.